Hey Jim, what are you doing? Don't give anything to him. I'll take it. Sam, that was very mean of you. Jim, you should know that he's poor because God wants him to be poor. Whew. Love is sharing, no doubt. But you need to know with whom you have to share. But Sam... No buts here, Jim. If you love God, you ought to follow His plans. Oh, but Sam... I have to meet Uncle Francis today. I have to ask him. Hey Jim, why are you so quiet? Are you angry with me? So, so sorry, Uncle Francis. Not at all. In fact, I wanted to meet you. What happened, my son? Tell me. Uncle, does God punish some people and make them poor? I thought that God loved all of us. Huh, very interesting question. But what made you ask that question? Uncle Francis, today at school, I wanted to share my snack with a poor classmate of mine. But my friend Sam stopped me. He said that we should not share food with someone who was punished by God. Gosh, what are you saying, Jim? That is so mean. Hush, Joan. I can see that poor Jim is confused. It is not his fault. And I appreciate the fact that he chose to ask me about it. Sorry, Jim. Sorry, Uncle. I apologize for interrupting you, Jim. No problem, Joan. Jim, my boy, I know that there are many poor people around. But it is up to those who have plenty to share it with those who don't. If they are poor today, it is because we, who have more, don't want to share it with those who have less. In fact, I feel that we humans have created poverty, not God. Who? I feel so relieved. Thank you, Uncle. I feel so relieved now. But then... What does the Bible say about all this? The entire Bible is the love story of God and His people. God so loved the world that He sent His only Son, Jesus, to die for us. You find that in John's Gospel. In fact, it is John who, writing in his epistles, stresses that God is love. Thank you, Uncle. I'm going to tell Sam about this. But, Uncle, who is this Apostle John? Can you please tell us his story? Yes, Uncle. Tell us about him, please. To answer your question, Jim, I would say that I believe that St. John wrote the fourth gospel. He wrote the Revelation and the Epistles, too. But there are so many controversies around that. But why, Uncle? Jim, sometimes we needlessly create controversies. What is important is to read the Word of God and start living according to it. Personally, I believe that St. John wrote it because he was very close to Jesus. In a few places in that Gospel, John vouches that all that he wrote about Jesus really happened and that he was a witness to it. Well, Uncle Francis, we believe it too. Please tell us the story of John. All right, I will tell you about St. John the Apostle and Evangelist. St. John was one of the first to be chosen by Lord Jesus to be his disciple. He was a follower of John the Baptist before joining Jesus. One day, John and his friend Andrew were standing along with John the Baptist when Jesus passed that way. Look, he's the Son of God. You should follow him from now on. Yes, Master. Come, Andrew, let us go to him. Thank you for guiding us all this time, Master. What do you want, my friends? Master, we were the followers of John the Baptist, and he asked us to follow you from now on. Master, please teach us about God. Please allow us to be your disciples. Hmm. Yes, you can be my disciples. Where do you live, Master? Sure. So they went with Jesus to his house. 
Hello, sir. Who are these young men? Mother, these are my new friends. This is Andrew, and and this is John. Hello, Andrew. John, you look familiar. Aren't you the son of Salome and Zebedee? Yes. <laughs> of course. I know you and your family well. I know you too, but I didn't know you were his mother. How do you do, Aunt Mary? I'm fine by the grace of God. All of you should stay for lunch today. And that is my father. Hello, sir. So now you know where I live. Are you satisfied? Of course, Jesus. I'm glad I met your parents too. Come, spend this day with us. John and his brother James were fishermen like their father and had a boat of their own. One day, Jesus decided to pay them a visit, but when he reached the shore, he found them sitting around as they could not catch any fish. Huh? Hey, John, come here a minute. What is it, James? Look, I think it's your friend Jesus. Jesus? The where, where is he? He's in Simon's boat and they are leaving the shore. Brother, where is Simon and Andrew going? They are mad to follow that son of Joseph. He was telling them to cast their nets in the deep and they will find fish. <laughs> I don't know how they could believe him. What does the son of a carpenter know about fishing? I believe he knows more than any of us. You too? <laughs> Go then, follow them, fish in the deep waters. <laughs> hey John, are you okay? Why are you running up and down? It is really Jesus. He told Simon that he will find fish in the deep waters. Did he? Then let's get ready to. Yes James, hurry, let's get ready to sail. I'm sure they will call us too. They set sail and started following Jesus and Peter. But when they reached the deep waters, Peter started calling out for help. They saw that Peter's boat was about to sink because it was loaded with fish. It was a miracle. John then helped Peter to carry the mighty catch back to shore. John was amazed at what had happened and he fell on Jesus' feet. When Jesus invited John along with Peter, Andrew and James to follow him, John at once left his nets and followed Jesus. John, the youngest of the apostles, soon became the favorite of Jesus. In fact, Jesus names him and his brother James Boanerges, or Sons of Thunder, for their great zeal, passion, and ambition. In fact, in his early days, John was sometimes rash, reckless, and often aggressive. One day, John took Jesus to the cornfields. Teacher, that man over there was using your name to cast out demons. But don't worry, we have stopped him doing that anymore. Huh? Why did you do that? Because he wasn't one of our group. My dear John, don't stop him. Anyone who performs miracles in my name will do good to others. Anyone who is not against us is with us. You are right, Master. I'm sorry. On another occasion, Jesus sent some messengers to a Samaritan village to get things ready before his arrival. But they were turned away. When John and James heard about this, they were very angry. Lord, should we order fire down from heaven to burn them up? I think we should do that, Lord. They turn back our messengers. My friends, remember, my message is a message of love and forgiveness. You need to give up your worldly attitudes and start loving the sinners. As John's relationship with Jesus became stronger, he became a changed person. He began to understand that those who wanted to be great first needed to be humble. John was deeply touched by Jesus' act of washing the feet of his disciples at the Last Supper. In fact, his gospel is the only one which mentions it. 
John was one of the three disciples most trusted by the Lord. Like his own brother, James and Peter, John witnessed the raising of Jairus' daughter, the Transfiguration, and to Jesus' agony in the Garden of Gethsemane. It was John and Peter who were responsible for preparation of the Last Supper. And at the Last Supper, he sat next to Jesus. John was the only apostle present at the crucifixion, along with Mary, the mother of Jesus, at the foot of the cross.